Hallow's End, one of WoW's original holidays. When did it start? What could you do in it? Let's start off with the very first Hollow's End, back in the year of 2005. It is over. Your search is done. Let fate choose now, the righteous one. <laughs> 2005, first ever Hollow's End takes place. Horde burns the Wickerman after Sylvanas gives a speech. Bobbing for apples were added to inns. Also, innkeepers gave treat bags, which have pretty much all the same things in them that the treat bags have today, including candy, costumes, and masks. High-level mobs and almost any boss-type mob in instances had a chance to drop a 16-slot pumpkin bag, which was a pretty decent-sized bag back in the day. Also, three quests were added. One to collect candy from capital cities for the kids of your faction, and the other two were faction-specific. Horde got the quest to stink bomb South Shore, and Alliance got the quest to clean it up. So typical of Alliance lore, always reacting to things. The quest fit their faction fantasy perfectly. Though there were problems with it, the Alliance could only do their quest if the Horde did theirs. So they were reliant on the Horde actually caring to do the holiday quests if they wanted a chance at doing their own. Which led to Alliance players wondering, if they should just let Horde players into the town relatively untouched, instead of defending it. That way they could actually do their holiday quest, as the Hollows End holiday quests were supposed to promote world PvP. But eventually, four years later, Blizzard found a wonderful way to fix this problem. They added an undead NPC with a human mask to the town, who could stink bomb it for them. That way they could clean up their town without having to rely on the Horde to stink bomb it for them. How wonderful a blizzard to add a convenient fix in such a timely manner. Then in 2011, three years after adding the NPC, Blizzard finally gave up on these quests and added the bombing raids we have today. Now let's go to 2007, two years after the first Hollow's End. Blizzard added the Headless Horseman holiday boss to the game, making him the first real holiday boss in WoW and the oldest boss in game that is still relevant at max levels to this day. The Headless Horseman would terrorize a few low-level towns of both factions every four hours, and it had new quests added to the game to stop him. The quests are all very similar to the ones we still have today, putting out fires and just generally trying to stop him. In order to face the Horseman though, you had to clear your way through the Scarlet Monastery until you got to the graveyard. And then, you could reset and try again, but having to clear through the dungeon each time. The things he dropped have always been pretty much the same, and just updated each expansion to be relevant. Also, I hear he drops a mount, but having done him every day in all of my tunes for the past seven years, I don't think that's true. Funny enough, in Cataclysm, there was a bug for a while where if you clicked on the pumpkin to summon the Headless Horseman, it would crash your game. Even hovering over the pumpkin would crash your game, making actually doing the boss fight almost impossible for a while until it was fixed. Also, back in 2007 is when they added black cats to the holiday lineup, which were critters that would roam around cities, and killing one of them would give you a bad luck debuff for two hours. They're still in the game, I might add, despite me saying all that in the past tense. In 2008, the Sinister Squashling pet was added to the loot table of things to obtain from the trick-or-treat bags, in addition to the hollowed helm headpiece that puts a pumpkin on your head if you equip it, and the temporary broom mount. A jack-o'-lantern bag was added to the loot tables of high-level mobs, which was an 18-slot bag, in addition to the pumpkin 16-slot bag. Candy buckets were also added to the game in this year. Also, achievements were added to the game with the Wrath of the Lich King, which included a Hollows End meta achievement. Blizzard had also added the Holiday meta achievement, what a long strange trip it's been, which awarded a 310 flying speed mount, which was something that could only be obtained through special means, as you could only buy up to 280% flying speed from the trainers. And mounts all had their own running speed, they weren't normalized like they are today, so this achievement was one of the few ways to get the fastest flying in the game. But one of the Hollows End achievements was thought to be nearly impossible. You see, one of the achievements required you to equip all of the Hollows End masks at least once. 
but the only way to get the mask was from trick-or-treating in an inn from the innkeeper. And every time you did this, you'd get an hour-long debuff that wouldn't let you do it again until it went away. With only so many hours in the day, you had a very limited amount of time to try and get lucky to collect all the masks, as they dropped randomly, and there was no way to trade them or buy specific ones from a vendor like you can do today. It was so bad, people were actually waking up each hour at night during the event to maximize the amount of treat bags they could loot in a day. Blizzard eventually fixed this problem by just removing the mask requirement from the meta achievement, and then added mask vendors in years later. In 2009, like I mentioned earlier in the video, they added an NPC to the South Shore so Alliance could stink bomb their own town, and then cleaned it up without relying on the Horde. They had also added treat bags to candy buckets by this point, so you could just go around the worlds and loot all of them at your leisure. I also want to mention the treats you get in the buckets. You see, today, if you eat them, they just give cosmetic effects. But back in the day, they used to give legit buffs to stats. The stats were all minor, but they were all the same stats no matter what level you were, making them infinitely more powerful in low-level characters. And I remember reading that guilds who like to tackle low-level PvE content on twinked out characters loved the Hollows End holiday the most, as the buffs from the candy helped them out immensely. In 2010, when the Dungeon Finder was put in the game, players could just queue up for the holiday boss exclusively for the first time, allowing you to not have to run through the whole dungeon every time you wanted to do the boss, and in fact, is the only way to fight the boss today, as they removed it from the original dungeon and the fight just takes place in an instance version of it now. In 2011, with the new expansion of Cataclysm, some changes were made to Hollow's End. The first being the burning of the Wickermen for both sides. It used to be only the Horde burned a Wickermen, and the Alliance could put it out. But now again, Greymane will give the speech for the Alliance side, so both sides can go and put out each other's Wickermen's. Two new pets were added, the Feline Familiar, which could just be bought from a vendor, and the Creepy Crate, which requires a short quest chain to obtain. This is also when the South Shore bombing runs were removed, and when the daily quest we have today of just doing a bombing run on a broom was introduced, along with the quest to clean them up. Tricky treats were also added in this year, you know, the Hollows End Currency, which could be used to buy the items that normally have a random chance to drop from various Hollow End events like the candies, pets, and broom mount. This is also when they finally added a mask vendor, so players could finally complete the RNG mask achievement, as well as a wand vendor. Also, a few other daily quests were added for Hollow's End in this year. A lot of the things added in this year are still a big part of the game's holiday to this day. In 2012 and 13, nothing changed. There were no major changes or additions to Hollow's End until 2014, with the Warlords of Draenor expansion. A lot of new items were added to the treat vendors, like limited-use costumes, two new pets, some new toys, and costumes for the perky pug pet. In 2015, more things were added, including decorations for your garrison that allowed you to catch three new pets, more toys, costumes, wands, and a new series of daily quests. In Shadowmoon Valley, you can do four daily quests where you just run around and try to stop a skeleton ghost crew, which awards tokens used to unlock the decorations for your garrison. In 2016, a few new costumes and wands were added, in addition to a daily quest in the Broken Isles with the launch of the new Legion expansion. The daily quest takes place in a random spot in Val Shara and just requires you to kill a mob, which then has a chance to drop some Witch's Hat for Transmog. And now we come to the current year. 2017. As is tradition, ever since 2014, a new costume was added, some new toys, and finally a new pet named Naxi. They also changed the Headless Horseman so you can queue up for it at level 23 and up, instead of nearly max level. But you can only get the mount from the pumpkin bag that dropped from the horseman from levels 100 and up. So you still need to be near max level if you want a chance at the mount. You can also now transmog your gear to Hollow's End armor during the event, which is a new one. As before, you actually had to wear the cosmetic items if you wanted to dress up for the event. And other than that, no real major changes. Hollow's End has come a long way from only having three quests to do, to now having multiple daily quests all over the place. With tons of toys and pets to buy if you hadn't already collected them from the previous years. 
If you're new to WoW, there is a ton of things to do and obtain from the holiday. And if you're a veteran player, Blizzard actually started adding new things each year, starting in 2014. This end have I reached before. What new adventure lies in store? 